All right. Yeah, so now we're going to have a, another exciting part. We're going to show you some of the things that our developers and we're working on at SAFE. And yes. uh, so we have all the teams ready to go here, I think. Yeah, so we, first we're going to talk about a few things coming out in FME 2017.1. So, um, of course, we have a new splash screen. Yep. So that's Surfing always important. data, riding the data wave, as that, you could say. That's right. So uh, that's, that's always exciting. And we'll have wallpaper for you soon about that. Yep. Um, yeah, new formats. We talk at, at SAFE, we often talk about Connect. That's the first thing we talk about. Some people think that's all we do. But um, as all of you do, it's, that's just the beginning. And so we're always adding more and more um, systems to connect to to enable you to work with more different types of data. Yeah, so <clears throat> specifically, the Landsat on AWS adds to the Sentinel and Planet yeah. in terms of remote sensing things. And I think uh, that's a pretty big deal. The terrain tiles is uh, a descendant of that story that uh, yep. Chris Hadfield told us about. Yeah, yeah. So is it, does that replace the map Zen? Well, on it, the store? That's right. <clears throat> on the and it has yeah. a nice, um, <clears throat> you can use these things in a feature reader, which makes them very attractive. Yeah, and the SAP HANA reader, spatial reader and writer, that's an exciting one for folks who use that high speed uh, spatial HANA database. Yep. And uh, new map info format. There's some patient Swedes, as I like to say, that have been waiting for us to do the <clears throat> Google VRT for probably as long as I can remember. So yep. thank you for your patience. Um, <laughs> and even the Amazon Athena, that's, yeah. you've been playing with that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you're interested in that, how all, you, all these remote sensing things tie together, Dimitri's got to talk late this afternoon. If you stay till the bitter end, just before the ice cream, um, you can yeah. see this all being put together. Yeah. On the update side, well, why not? Yeah, uh, why not talk more about shape? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we basically have had the ability to create shape spatial indexes forever if you had ArcGIS installed. But now, if you don't have ArcGIS, you still can create those indexes. Yeah, yeah, and OG Geo OGC GeoPackage, I'm pretty excited about that one. Um, if you haven't played with it, do play with it. Um, with rasters, you can, you can turn on pyramiding, which makes it just a, a fantastic thing. Even, um, even as a background map in FME, it could create that pyramid with your own information on it, and then you'd be able to oversee what you have. So really, really good. And I know in this room there's a lot of Elasticsearch fans, so we've made it work with version 5. Yeah, good. So yeah. that's worth, uh, worth yeah. getting. And then, of course, we're always improving other formats, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Dates and times, um, the old date formatter rides off to the sunset yep. and is replaced by the date time formatter. Yeah, during the, um, the hackathon last night, uh, my team, we, we actually had to work with date and times. And at the beginning, I was like, ooh, but it's really so much better than it was before. We were even able to deal with UTC and comparing times from different time zones. It was great. So you'll always know if grandpa's OK. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll That's know good. if grandpa's so OK. If or if we need to give him a poke. <laughs> So if you're interested in dates and times, you can catch it just before lunch with Lena and Ty yep. and uh, check it out. Robert, I know that's a big deal for you. You've been needing that forever. Yep. And please do give us feedback on it, how we can even make it better. It's, like, it's, it's interesting. Date and times, we all think it's pretty simple. But as we're working on it, I was reading about other systems, about dates and times. And mostly, I just read about sad stories of users working with dates and times. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting it's thing. It's actually a, a very it, hard problem. It's very hard problem. It turns out. <clears throat> so, um, in 2017.1, data inspection is drastically faster if you're using an inspector transformer. Yep. So in a lot of cases, about half as long from when you hit run until you're <coughs> seeing the results. And so that's a, a nice thing. We're going to see a little bit of that technology as it's going to manifest in 2018 a bit later on. Yep. OK, so versioning. So versioning an FME server. So we'll have uh, the first group up here. We'll have Amreen. Um, Hugh and um, Edwin, these are the folks from the server team. So Amreen has been with SAFE for, I'm going to say, six months? A little less than six months. A little less than four. six months? A little okay, a little less than four. <laughs> okay, so not that way. There we go, and we'll ignore them. I'll fix my VPN problem later. Sorry about that. But let's hopefully we have, we have internet here. Okay, oh, I gotta escape this. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and we're right. So versioning, here. while Don's setting up, I'll just say yeah. versioning is a and, big deal uh, for all of you. We talked about it yesterday on the couch a little bit. That. Um, and that's this is our first step oh, nice. towards integrating versioning into the core of FME. We're starting out in FME server. I've actually never even seen this myself, so I'm pretty excited to see what's. Is there, are you all set up, Don? I think we're all set up, yeah. And if anything goes wrong, hey, it was my fault. Okay, so Amreen, so. Just so this is a latest server. So if you just browse to a repository before you do that. For sure. So yeah, so, and we've all done this before. We see our repositories. 
and uh, you know we see some data and it looks good before. We've all published things to the web, to our servers and then realized it wasn't such a good idea. So, so with this versioning, how can I turn this on? This on? So you go to the system configuration page here. Yep. And then you can enable version control as a technology preview. Yeah. So we've made it a technology preview for 2017.1. And if you turn it on, so Amreen's turned it on. And so now if you go to repositories, what do you see? So when you go to repositories, you see an additional version control tab. We'll talk yep. about that a little later. Yeah. But then you can also browse the history of server. Yeah. Yep. So and you then can you can see, see all every time I publish the server, there's there's a history there. And uh, if you zoomed into a particular um, repository, I think you would just see the ones for that as well. Yep, so we can yep. choose this one here. Yep. And yep. then if I go browse history, I see all the uh, publications for that repository. Yep. And then you can go even further and go to specific items. So yep. for example, this guy yep. here, yep. I can see that there was version 3 and version 4 as well. Yeah, so what if we, what if we publish something that was bad? So you can go to that workspace and just quick, quickly hit just uh, publish that the guy. Uh, just to help just her down. Sorry. Yeah, just There you go. So there if you, you publish that guy up there. So, so we can just blow away a few things. Sure. Make it bad. Sure. <laughs> We're going to just delete that. Sure, that looks great. Now publish that guy. Oh. There you go. <laughs> now publish that up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to need here. that for a later demo, just so you know. Republish? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. hopefully this works. And you yeah. Can back correctly. Yeah, OK, republish. Sure. Oh, oh. sorry. No, that's, that would nope, be, you don't want to do just that. Just hit the red. Yep. Just go republish. It's amazing how hard things are to use in front of uh, a crowd, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. So okay, Done. so now, so there you go. Yeah, we don't. So now, if we go back to server there, which is um, yep, right here. There you go. Okay, I'll go here. Yeah, there we go. And so now, if you re you look at you go there back to wherever you published it, which would be that parent one. Yeah. So it's the parent one. Yeah. Yep. So you published it today at nine whatever. Hey, so look at that! Right just a few, there, seconds few seconds ago. ago. Yeah, so that would be, so that's the bad one. So how would I get back to the previous one? So the previous one, what you could do is select it and yep. then see its history. Oh, even individual. Individual. Nice, and nice. then I could see this is probably the good one here. Oh, uh, yeah. And okay. then I and just click okay. download. Yep. Yep. And then and you then save it someplace. Save yep. it someplace. Yep, sure. Maybe that here. looks good to me. Perfect. And then, and, then, and then I have it back. And then you have it back. And then can we open it up in Workbench? Sure. You can Go do that. Quick. Yep. Yep. Maybe the internet's so slow. It's probably here. running somewhere. Yeah. Else. Anyway, we'll um, we're going to assume that that worked. I think. Because yeah. uh, I think it's yeah. it worked. Yeah, it worked. It worked. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so so there you go. There that, is. This is one of the things that uh, oh, it worked yes. on. Oh, sorry. It's good. Oh, there it is. Okay, great. You oh, found no, it's it. Not this one. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's somewhere. That's that's no, no. That would be the one you downloaded. Oh wow. There's lots yeah. of dancing FMEs. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's a new. Hey, that's, a, that's great. Look at that. So, yeah, Debuting so all, on no, stage. No it's all good. It's all <laughs> the good. The dancing so, workbench. So, so there you go. There was the one that I had last night. That was my last known good one. And of course, um, I did lose some edits, but that's my own kind of fault, right? So there you go. Yep. So good. Excellent. So thank you so much. Oh, all yeah. Right. So, so Hugh leads the team. And Edwin, we, we kind of feel sorry for Edwin because he's the REST guy. He's the guy who builds all the wonderful REST calls that all this stuff um, sits on top of, so you can't really come up and demo a, a REST call, but, but you can be sure that all this stuff is sitting on top of the great work uh, you know, that Edwin and Hugh do to just, just so the, these GUIs can be built. So yeah, so thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> awesome. How do we get back to the... Yeah. We're having fun here. Oh, I got a lot of... I've never had so many... Well, it's not true. So there we go. So now we're going to go back to... Okay. Back to our presentation. Which is right here. And start started from scratch. Yep. And we go right to sneak peek. So there we go. So <laughs> there we go. OK. So yeah, 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 yeah. So what's up next? So next we have, I can wait for this baby to load. We have, um, we have, boy. It's a higher, no, you're going too far. Don't show them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're right. We're There's right, all these shape right, file slides right in there. Here. Multiple job queues. OK, so this is another thing in server. OK, so and again, this is 2017. Yep. So there we got you there going there, Rob. So this is our server. So, so Rob, what are these multiple job queues about? 
This allows us to dedicate engines to uh, specific jobs and specific repositories. Okay. So, so where do I go under engines and licensing? Under yeah. engines and licensing, you now have the ability from the UI to create specific queues. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see what we did on this one. Rob has set up a number of queues, one called finance. You imagine the finance department. Right now we give them, uh, even though they pay for the whole thing, <laughs> we only give them one engine. And then we've, um, we've given sales and marketing um, another engine. And then we have these short web requests for things that have to be done quickly. And last but not least, if you scroll to the very bottom, we have this one called after hour. It must be at the top. There it is, after hours. And it doesn't have any jobs. So let's go look at our let's go look at our queue there, Rob. Our job queue. So and you can see what's happened. We have some big jobs. These are large jobs that take a long time, but we don't want them to bog down our server. So these jobs might be submitted during the day, um, and but they're not actually going to run. They're just going to wait until we actually give them a queue. So how do I go and give them a queue? You can they're do it this way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this is one way. They're t currently uh, attached to a queue, but there's no engines associated. Yeah. So we can go in and, and just pick an engine. Yeah. Assign a couple engines. Here, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and now if you go back to the queue, running. Yeah. You can yep. see that the jobs are currently being processed and currently running. Yeah. Yeah. And so there you go. And of course, you can control this again with the API. And the idea is we want to give you more control of how you can use your server. You know, now you can partition a server if you across departments, and you won't have to worry that one department is, is just bringing your whole server down. Um, and also, you don't have to get sophisticated schedules or figure out how you're going to run these jobs that are large. You can just submit them anytime, and then later you can do it. So yeah. So thanks, Rob. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. So we'll go back here. What's next? We can just hit present, and I think it's. Yeah. Uh, I think Don, you're going to talk about some cloud stuff. Yeah. Oh, no. So now we're going to talk about. I'm not going to go to present mode. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. You're just going to talk today. <laughs> yeah. So Stephen, come on up and Grant. <clears throat> so one of the things we also uh, work with at Safe is how can we make it easier for people to run uh, many, many jobs that that depend on each other. So here's Steven. He uh, works on the server team, but he also works on the GUI. So he's sort of our interface, um, and he works on interfaces yep. with desktop to the server. He also does stuff on the server core. Grant is um, Grant and I have a lot of fun playing with Docker and thing. Oh no, no, not playing. Working with Docker <laughs> and uh, and things like that. And so this we're going to see we're going to see part of that. So if Kev, if um, Steven goes here, oh boy, yeah, yeah that'll work. Let's just use this one. Yeah, let's just use that one. Okay. So the FME server job submitter, what have we done there? So the FME server job submitter is great for submitting jobs one at a time. Yep. And you can set whether or not to wait for the job to complete or not. That's right. So now, in 2017.1, we've added a way to submit jobs in parallel. Yes. And you can also wait uh, for jobs to complete, all the parallel jobs to complete or not. Right. And before in FME, this was very, very difficult. I tried to do this in a workspace. I was able to pull it off, but I wasn't able to show anybody because I needed way over 10 transformers. Because you had to be, and there was polling involved. It was really, really ugly. Yeah. So um, again, Stephen and Edwin's out there somewhere, um, did some change on the back end on the REST API. And so now, so, what, so what, did you add new ports, it looks like, as well? That's right. So by the way, the, the options right here, it's in the middle, called Submit Job. Kind of hard to see. Oh, you can, oh. you can see. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. OK. OK. Yep. And we've also split out the ports as well. So when a job completes, it only goes to the succeeded port. Yep. And when a job fails, it only goes to the failed port. Yep. And if a job didn't get submitted, it actually goes to the rejected port. OK, perfect. So for more green control. Yeah, and then, the, and then you have a summary as well, which will give you all the job IDs if you want to do things. And the idea is you could launch a whole bunch of things, wait till they're all done, then do some more things, and as you know, really build um, really complex flows. It's like kind of like a map reduce pattern yeah, also right. falls out of this. So, <clears throat> that's right. Yeah. So let's let let's go over here and let this baby rip, and then we got a quick short video to watch. So oh. sorry about that. This video, right? Yeah. Yeah. So imagine that we go and we run this on the server, and now this is where Grant's work comes in. Yeah. Is um, basically as jobs are being submitted, Grant's built this technology that automatically spawns um, EC2 instances. So this is sort of a precursor to what 
the cloud guys are going to be doing, what we're going to be able to do in the cloud, as well as because we're using Docker technology, we will also want this ability that you'll be able to do it in your in in house. So if you want to be able to spin up engines, you know, use machines temporarily to process large data flows, then uh, this is the idea. We recognize that, you know, while the cloud is where we're all going, there are in cases where that organizations have to run stuff on premise, and so we we want to make sure we build a really strong strong. Uh, Technology base so that it can we can serve both of those. So um, yeah, so you can see what what goes on here. I think it's almost done. And then at the end, we'll speed it up a little bit. And then at the end, you can see what we do is when the engines are are gone, the whole thing just collapses right back down, freeing all those resources. This this uh, the reason we made a movie is this takes over an hour in this one because we don't actually get rid of the engines until our EC2 hour is almost up. And this is something we're working towards 2018 and beyond. So um, yeah. So thank you so much, guys. Thanks very yeah. much. <clears throat> truly auto scaling. Yep. Truly auto scaling elastic compute coming to uh, FME servers. So if you needed to process all those images from Planet Labs and yeah. you have a very deep pocket, you can do it in a hurry. Yep. So next we're going to look at um, we're going to look at uh, FME Cloud. So oh, he's okay. So FME Cloud, we're going to look at. Um, um, They've added new um, billing and, and um, notification capabilities on FME Cloud. Because one of the things we want to do is we want to make FME Cloud as easy as possible to manage. And so we're automating as many things as we can. Um, be before this, you could automate things like you know, when you're running low on disk, when you're running low on memory, when your response rate goes back. But we know one of the things with cloud is people are always concerned about is they, want, they, they don't want any billing surprises. So the team of Stuart, where's Stuart and them? They're over there. Oh, they're, stand up, guys, stand up. Yeah, so, this is, so, so the cloud guys over there have been working really hard so that you can set up, now you can set up billing alerts. Uh, um, and so then you'll know that, hey, you know, um, this is how much you've spent. You've, you've seen that, so that's great. And also, um, a lot of instance events. And this is really good because um, um, I maintain a couple of machines, and I have to log in periodically to check to see if I need to reboot because of security. Now I can get an alert that says, hey, there's some security patches that have been applied. These security patches require a reboot, so we recommend that you perform the reboot. We're not just going to reboot your machine because we don't know when it's critical to you. So, but we'll tell you when to reboot your machine. And there's all sorts of other things um, you know, that you can get notified. You know? Like maybe I'm using my Blue Sky machine, the Blue Sky machine, and, it go, and I, I want to know when it goes paused. Like, why did somebody pause it? So, so all sorts of things like that. So we're pretty uh, excited about, about all of that. OK. So now we're going to start looking at FME 2018 and beyond. Yeah. So we'll move this mic over here. Yep. <coughs> so what, what's next? Let's have a look. Oh, this well, thing. We have a splash screen. Awesome. Yep. Good. So yeah, so that's just encouraging you to try out the betas. There, fmewsafe.com downloads beta. I yeah, think. there isn't any. There aren't any 2018 betas available yet. We'll make them available once we release 2017.1. Right. Because we only want to fight one set of fires at a time. Absolutely. So I guess in the future, I threw this in, Don, because this is uh, you know the, the little bit of vanity that we're allowing ourselves. Our name's <laughs> going to be on top of uh, that. Is the new building will yeah. be on the top floor of that. Yeah. So that will happen around the time. Well, About 20, a year-ish from now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we're pretty excited about that. We got the top five floors and the roof. Yep. Yep. So uh, we'll be able to have another out of this world party up there. Absolutely. <laughs> we think that we're going to have like a bat symbol, except it'll be an FME logo that when there's a data emergency, they will pull that lever and the FME logo will go up in the sky. Well, um, <laughs> that would work well in Vancouver. There's a lot of cloudy days. Exactly. <laughs> For at least nine months of the year, it'll work fantastic. <laughs> so um, we're going to now do kind of a. a series of interviews with the dev teams. Yeah. So Don, why don't you take this one over? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, just the, and, the, and the idea is here, we just want to give you guys an idea of all the things that, we ha that we're working on. So here's Juan and Joel. These are the, uh, the guys that have brought us all the amazing XML, HTTP caller, JSON, um, yeah, so um, this I3S that they're working on, cesium, AIXM. So anyway, so some of the things that they're working on. So yeah, what's coming is the uh, XSD-based XML writing, which is the uh, equivalent for someone's clapping <laughs> for uh, like GML, but without work about the uh, GML semantics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, uh, the the SOCI GML format, um, we're excited about that. 
Um, they're, FME can do it right now pretty well, but you have to specify with the XSDs and, and you have to know where the XSDs are and all that. So, so, so these guys are going to work to make it so that it's just on a pick down list. You don't have to know where the XSD is and all that great stuff. Yeah. And Joel, what's the next one? Uh, I3S uh, is a new um, web based 3D format from Esri. Uh, yeah. So we're going to add a writer for 2018. Yeah. Uh, so how's that going? Pretty well? It's almost done. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Wow. First iteration is almost done. That's awesome. And then, um, you know, as far as data volumes go, um, we know that GML is pretty big, so much bigger than Shape, for example. <laughs> we probably should give a word next time for the most voluminous That's format. right, that's right. The number that's of right. petabytes Absolutely. consumed. That's right. So um, GML coverages is something that's, that's coming? Uh, yeah, uh, people have been asking for, for a while. <laughs> and we will uh, really read and write the GML coverages into uh, FME point clouds. Yep, yep. So wow. there we go. Yeah. Awesome. All right, thanks. Well, thanks, guys. So, Don, yep. um, I'm wondering, why was XML the first one? And uh, is that because, are we going in like reverse alphabetical order? So, well, I figured Shape already had, you know, enough <laughs> glory. And so, you know, like Shape is, I think Shape got the award because it's old. Is that right? Yeah, that, was, a, that like, was an ingredient. That's right, okay. <laughs> yeah, I noticed the cutoff, and I was, at first I was kind of outraged, but then I realized, 25 years, well. Yeah. yeah. Actually, XML is younger than Safe. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People have asked why didn't we do UTF-8 out of the box too, and yeah. it's like, well, it didn't kind of exist then. Right. So yeah. So who's next? Platforms oh, team. Platform team. Come yep. on down, Ben, Chris, Matthew, Raven. We must be short one. <laughs> There's four there and three here, but anyway. Matthew's making his move. He's, he's going to join us shortly here. Okay. okay. Job, oh, Matthew. he's coming from the far side. Oh, there okay. he is. Yeah, Matthew. He didn't get the menu, the memo. He always does that. He always does that. <laughs> so anyway, Raven, tell us what you guys are up to. All right. So um, kind of the, uh, the main responsibility of our team is to keep the Linux and Mac builds strong and healthy. Um, and so a lot of that's maintenance work where we, uh, we just have to be on top of the latest operating system versions, making sure we're still compatible. Um, and kind of keeping up with what, what Windows is doing, so making sure we support all the same formats, all the same third-party libraries. Uh, a slightly bigger thing we want to do is improve the memory management um, so that Linux will be able to deal with some of the extremely high volume data sets that Windows can handle. Uh, we have some, some issues on that front right now. We can improve it. And then, uh, and then kind of you know, not quite in the same category, we also own all the JDBC formats. Um, and so in this coming release, we want to do probably at least two more. Uh, one of them is Google Cloud Spanner, which is a, uh, a massively scalable relational database. That's kind of their take on, you know, maybe, maybe no data, no, NoSQL is too hard for some people. So we like relational stuff, but we want it to scale like a NoSQL database would. Uh, and then uh, a very long-standing request is kind of the LDAP Active Directory Reader. Um, it's not really a database at all, but it turns out the JDBC can talk to it, so we're going to give it a shot. Excellent. And between all this, you also will probably deal with whatever new compiler versions pop up. Yes, that's my favorite task. I, I can't wait. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they just love it when they get to report third-party libraries to these platforms, too. It must <laughs> be time right. for another XML library upgrade, don't you yeah, think, Don? Yeah, well, 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 these guys were critical in um, yeah. things like ta getting Tableau working, which was, was really great. Yeah. And Chris does a lot of work in the back on Docker as well, like um, helping safe embrace Docker at a build level. So yeah. we're excited about all that. So great guys. Anyway, Welcome. thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. All right. The integrations team. The hardworking integrations team. One of the things uh, we do at SAFE is integrate with lots of other third party products. And so uh, tell us what's up on your side of the fence. Well, when it comes to integrations, uh, our primary focus is on the Esri's ArcGIS Pro product. Yep. And so that's where we're putting the, the most integration work for uh, maturing and developing that, uh, getting it to be as good as the ArcGIS uh, integration that we had with the desktop product. Excellent. Great. And Pro, Pro is our exciting opportunity in taking most of our focus. But going forward, 2018 and beyond, we'll synchronize with the uh, schedules of all our release partners to get uh, a good FME engine embedded and get their end users to benefit from all the latest technology that uh, our whole team is working on. Excellent. Great. Great. Right. And as uh, FME continues to evolve, we're going to be updating our SDKs so that our partners can continue to develop components and uh, plug them into FME. 
Wonderful. Awesome. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you much. Okay. The, the geometrist. geometry team. Yeah. Okay. I think we should have had Kev dress up in a doctor's outfit. That's right. That's right. <laughs> anyway, take it away, Kevin. Well, I guess uh, this is a great opportunity for you to personally meet the team here, and I think that's great. Although everyone who uses FME, I think in some way, has already met our team, and you know a little bit about the team here. They're uh, intelligent and hardworking, and I'm privileged to know that in person that they are great human beings and they're just great friends, and so that you can be able to see that in, at this thing, at this event here, it's great. We do so many things uh, that are just a wide variety of things, but just three that I want to say that we're looking forward to now is uh, one of them is the issue of cleaning data. There's people who have gaps and slivers and overlaps and stuff, so we're working at baking in some tolerance and some cleaning operations and having those as options on a lot of the processing transformers that we have. The second thing is, of course, performance is always something that we're working towards. Specifically, we're looking at uh, multi-threading, using that at more places, that kind of thing. And lastly, we've been adding more native geometry objects to our object model, uh, several of them, and one specifically is uh, clothoids, that they're used as curves for railways or road networks, and uh, we're looking forward to see how some of you can take advantage of those. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Good. Not, not too many conferences have shapefiles, XML, and clothoids on the same stage together. <laughs> All right, on the database CAD side of things, we got lots of stuff going on there. Take it away, Paul. Yes, so we're super excited in 2017.1 uh, to give you a bunch of transformers and functions for dates and times. We're gonna work on more of those over the coming year. Um, there's a number of things that we've been doing to make our database readers more consistent and powerful, uh, making it easier to do updates, reading just the data that you want. Um, on the CAD and BIM side, uh, Bentley has an interchange format called iModel. We're going to read that pretty soon. Uh, Revit on, for, uh, did I mix CAD and BIM? On the BIM side, Revit is going to be a little bit farther off. Uh, also for coordinate systems, the Australians have a wonderful datum coming up that I like to call G'day 2020. I thought they did as well. Apparently they call it GDA. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to work on that as soon as we get back to the office. And a little bit farther off, uh, Proj4. All right, thank you. Thanks. Must be close to Zhao Mei, I guess. I think so, yeah. All right, well, that's, that's a lot of uh, talking, so now we're going to try to go live just to kind of mix stuff up. Zhao Mei, you got a demo for us? Yeah. Okay, so you can grab that mic there. Yeah. Hi, so, everybody. So, Zhao Mei, you may know from the live chat side of things, before that, she was our QA person and she got to take some stuff for a spin. So, uh, tell me what you have. Uh, so this is how the story goes. A, a few weeks ago, uh, Tiana and uh, Dimitri came up with the idea of uh, um, making a contest using the uh, VR images. And um, so we came up with this uh, presentation that we wanted to show Don and Dale. Uh, yeah, the presentation. I, I don't know. Don, did you see that presentation? I didn't. Okay, well, maybe, we, sorry about that. But anyway, what, can you tell us, what were the ingredients or how did you pull this off? I so, hope you didn't spend too much time. Uh, when we, <laughs> it was at the planning stage, so um, we, came, we went out to the, uh, the field and took some pictures. And uh, that is the ingredients for the uh, presentation. Okay, so you had some, you had some geotagged photos mm -hmm. that were used for the VR thing. Okay, okay, so you got a workspace there, so they must be coming in on the left-hand side. So then what happens? Um, so that is basically the only source data we had, and these are the images that we took, and so um, this workspace will create some magic. All right, so, so let's run it, running and, it. Now, uh, and by the time the workspace finishes, the, the presentation is going to show up automatically. I'll just explain uh, what's going on in here. Yeah, first. tell us. Um, so this takes the GPS record in the uh, metadata of the images and send it up to ArcGIS Online to retrieve some uh, a background map. And this background map is combined with the points uh, of the locations to make a map of the, the filming location. And uh, that is done in the uh, uh, MapNIC rasterizer. And after that is the new thing that we have is the PowerPoint styler. So in here we can style uh, different types of slides um, based on the contents of it. And as you can see, there are um, uh, bullet points and charts, images, and uh, all that you can think of that you want to be in the PowerPoint. 
And um, these materials will be sent after some ordering. They'll be sent into the PowerPoint Writer Transformer. And here is where we specify a template. The template um, tells the workspace what these uh, styles will look like, while the, temp the styler actually uh, tells the writer which kind of style. Whoa, uh, there it's done. Wow. Wow, Perfect that's time. fantastic. Why don't we just flip through and show what these, uh, um, these slides look like? Yeah, uh, so these, this is how we prepared for the contest, and these are the maps of the locations and the images that we took at different locations. Some of you might have already seen these pictures. Um, Wow. And, and we can also do tables. This is the data from the elevation uh, records from the metadata of the mi images and charts. But you know, it's sure too bad Don and I didn't show up for that meeting because that would have been pretty cool to see. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm just glad the whole thing was automated so that, yeah. you know, yeah. But then now, so since we didn't show up, what did you guys have as a backup plan? So we know Don and Dales are, are always, always very busy, so we are prepared. And we also made a Word document also ah. using FME. Same kind um, of thing. Yeah, the work, workflow is very much uh, similar to the PowerPoint one. Uh, the styling is done using the Microsoft Word styler. And this, instead of styling by slides, this is st styled by part and different types of part. And so can you show us what kind of an output that you got? Yeah. That is right here. So then, oh yeah, that's right. You guys did email that to me. Good. I didn't look I like at that. it though. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, if you flip down, you wow. see the same kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, tables, there you go, tracks, tables and everything else. Very good. Well, Zhao Meng, thank you thank and you. the team for all the hard work. Don and I will do better next time. Absolutely. <laughs>
Flash Lizard is what we got yeah. going. So talking about performance. Oh, what? there's more coming. Yes. On performance. OK, never mind. I'll be okay. quiet right okay. now. <laughs> I just got excited. I just yes. got excited. So uh, that team also did uh, Innovation Days project a couple years ago on um, mm -hmm. video. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've seen people talking to me in the breaks and things about that, and we think maybe it's time for FME to go after some video stuff. Yeah, there's lots of videos we all know being recorded now by drones, and that's a question we get often is, you know, not only, I and mean, there's a couple, there's been a couple great talks uh, at the show about FME and drones just for planning routes, but also how to process the data. And one of the common um, workflows we get is people say, I have a lot of drone f footage. Can you tell, I want to basically have an arbitrary polygon and tell me when you have any footage in this area. And so that's just one workflow that works yep. out. Yep. The other thing that we did was actually lift frames out yeah. um, based on location. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, and so uh, even during the hackathon last night, there was, a, there was an AR headset up here people were playing around with. Um, we have innovation days, as we mentioned, at SAFE. And uh, one of the things that's been, for a couple years now, has been uh, people at SAFE, our, our amazing developers, playing with AR and VR. So we're really working to, to bring some of that technology to FME. So if that interests you, if you have a, a use case for that, please do reach out to us. Because as we build this new technology, there's nothing better than actually having a real live scenario or a real live use case that makes sure we, we solve an interesting, useful problem rather than just an interesting problem. So, yeah. OK. Well, I think we may have technical problems here. Should we yank an HDMI cord and push it over there? It looks like it's not understanding HDMI, hmm. the second one. We can pull this one. We could always pull this one. And then we'll deal with the ramifications later. It looks like that's, I think the German word is tot. Um, you can pull that one if you want. Should we yank? Uh, We're, we are go for yank. All right. There we go. What's going to happen? Let's see. How much slack do we have? I'm going to pull it down through the bottom. Don used to be an AV guy in another I job. used to be an AV guy. Yeah, it's awesome. It's my fallback position. All right. <laughs> if things don't work out, we can always go to AV. All right. And, oh, That's we're in business. OK, we'll deal with the rest later. <laughs> <laughs> so let's bring the desktop and UI team out here. And uh, they're going to try to show us some cool stuff that they've been working on. How are you feeling, Ian? Feeling pretty good. Let's uh, get that um, mic queued yeah. up for you. Okay. Hello, everybody. There you go. Okay. That's, right. That's much better. Okay. So, um, as mentioned, about a month ago, we had some innovation days at SAFE, and I just wanted to show off a few of the um, things that we were able to work on. So, first, um, when we drop in bookmarks, um, FMU currently gives it a random color, and sometimes those random colors don't really groove together very well. Not like somebody that's wearing, say, FME socks with a black dress. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Steven and Roger came up with this idea of color palettes that will, that can give you more harmonious colors for your bookmarks. Cool. And, it, and it, as you can see, you can scroll through these and you can actually get instant previews of what those look like. So I'm going to go with uh, tulip green here. Favorite for our Dutch friends. <laughs> That's right. That's right. For Ottawa. Um, so another thing, sometimes our workspaces get really complicated and we don't want to see all the details in every everything. So um, we have now the option to hide things we don't want to see anymore. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. So now I can focus on the area I want to. And I think this is really going to help my five transformer <laughs> rule. I could have a five bookmark rule. Yes. <laughs> so can you do that again? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 this is a little bit slower, please. Yeah. <laughs> there oh, it is. Yeah, Goodbye. Hello. Yeah, you so, and everything goodbye. that's, all the feature counts, everything that's in there will be maintained so that you can go back in and uh, if you want to expand and, and work out uh, any kind of details you need. So I think, Ian, one of the challenges, how do we expand and compress space and time when we do that? We're thinking of maybe shifting everything up and to the left or not. We don't know how jarring that would be, but um, that's going to be the area we'll explore in the next number yeah. of months. And if you have ideas, you can come see yeah. the group. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. and maybe I'll just put this plug in right now. We're going to be in the doctor's office. We're going to have this laptop there. If you guys want to come and give some of this a go, give us, give us some of your feedback. That'd be awesome. Um, so. 
One more thing. Uh, some of us work late at night and don't like the bright white glare of the background. And some of us prefer Darth Vader over stormtroopers. So now we have. That was a little thing. That's awesome. A lot of dark people in here. It seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, on to the another. So that's sort of a nice grab bag of uh, of, of pretty major improvements. Right. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to look even further into the future. We showed some of this stuff three years ago. Um, it was, Roger identified it as the only thing from our last UC that we actually hadn't rolled into the product. So the team dusted it off. Um, it's actually been being built for the full three years. You dusted it off and you gave it another go. And so take it away and show us what you got. That's right, yeah. So I mean, over the last three years, we've done a lot of improvements to enable the, this kind of scenario to work better. So one thing we wanted to look at is how can we give you instant visual feedback um, of the changes you're making while you are editing your workspace, so authoring your workspace. So starting from dragging and dropping in your data, we um, put this transform out here, and without any pop-ups, you get instant visual inspection of your data down below here. Wow. You can, you can see the number of features, the feature types in here, you can turn on and off layers to um, find the, to examine uh, the data to see what you want to pick out. Um, for this example, I'm going to look at accessible parking. Um, also, if you go into your parameters here and you make any changes, when you hit OK, you can instantly inspect what the result of those changes will be down below. So for here, I'm going to pick accessible parking, and then I hit apply. So immediately after I hit apply, I get my output port here, and I also get an immediate read of all the data. And I can click this and inspect what has just come out of there. In this case, I'm going to be looking at um, accessible parking near parks in the Vancouver area. So I'll put in a buffer, and then I got to put in a buffer amount. And I don't recall what the um, coordinate system of my data is. Well, I have everything here and ready to go, so I can just click on this link, click on my, one of my features, and see that this is UTM. So I know I'm dealing with meters. Go back to my buffer, put in 50 meters, and hit apply. And again, my workspace runs right away after I hit apply. Not only that, it is only running from this point. It's, all of this other stuff before this transformer has already been pre-cached. And so yeah. you don't Thank have you. to run your entire workspace as you're, as you're um, working along. That's one small step for a man. <laughs> yeah. And this is clearly huge when you're working with web data, right? Or you don't want to always be trying to pull it across. So right. this is awesome. Yeah. So when you're authoring, this is primarily focused when you're authoring and your data sets aren't yeah. huge. You yeah. can actually yeah. Yeah. get live feedback on your data. So I'm going to put in a spatial filter here as well. And I'm going to pull in another reader, so my parks data. And again, instant visual inspection. You can see what's going on. Um, I'm going to select my parks feature type here. Hit apply. And I get my output port automatically run. I'm going to connect this up to my candidate port. And um, this is not fully working yet, so I'm going to hit run from here. And so this is, you can pick any transformer. If you know something has changed, you can run from that specific point as well. And you can see that I got three features that have passed. Instantly inspect those features, 77 that have failed. So another, another cool thing about this is that now that you have all these links, and once you've run with full inspection, you can examine the data at each of these links. And you can actually navigate through your workspace and see how your data has changed as you, as you um, as you go along. And one final thing is you can compare the difference between the data at two separate links. By selecting multiple links, you can um, load up the data at each of those links and they become features here, or, or layers here, that you can enable and disable and you can inspect and see um, what has changed. Wow. Yeah.
So yeah, like I said, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. The, the data inspector fast inspection has gone into this to make this really fast. Um, one last plug I want to put in here while I'm up here. Um, the Python caller now has embedded text editors so that you don't have to open a pop-up window to edit your Python. It, it's just here in the parameter editor. Yeah. <laughs> edit, hit apply, it all works. Excellent. Hey, one thing else. What's with that base map? Yes, this is the new Planet Lab space map. Right, which is free down to 40 meters, and that'll be appearing in, uh, in an FME soon. And then if you pay some bucks, you can get it down to five meter resolution. Yep. Yeah. Great. Well done, Ian. Yep, great. And guys. the rest of the team. Awesome. Thank job. you all so Thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I'll rip your cord out here. Okay. The future's so bright, we got to wear shades. That's I right. Think. All right. Oh, yeah. We got to re well, we actually have to reconnect here. So that's right. That'll be exciting. So you can see I used to do H. See how quick I am? Yeah, you're, you're good at this, Don. I know. This guy here is a little is bit. Okay? This guy's here a little bit worried. I dropped off my resume. <laughs> <laughs> How's and, it uh, looking? And I've been asking, giving him heavy thought of questions all the time. Okay, so now what do we do? We hope. <laughs> okay. Well, we could always do the rest of the presentation on Ian's computer if we have. Oh, oh, something good's happening. Hey. Yeah, we're golden. Awesome, look at that. Are it's, we? <laughs> that's perfect. Well, it'll, it'll take it, a while. Is it just warming up? Yeah. It's sort of buff, buffering. Hopefully nobody's uh, got any issues with that. <laughs> it's subliminal, it subliminal yeah. messaging. Yeah. No? Maybe. Yeah, I can just yeah. do this. What are you gonna do? 720p. I saw Crank her down. down. Crank her down. Okay. Hey, you're okay. Oh, now we're okay. I think. Okay, yeah, well, we're we'll okay. see. Yeah, we're okay. Look at that. Let's Just see. a threat. I think that they've they've done some. Oh, they did it over there. But, but is it okay on this one now? We're, we'll see. I okay. don't know. Can you flip us back? We're golden, he says. Okay, we're good. We're golden. All right, so that was FME Workbench of the Future. Some parts of that will get into FME 20, 2018, others won't. One yep. thing Ian didn't highlight was the fact that there wasn't a traditional reader or writer there. Yeah, and I was going to mention that. And that wasn't the feature reader. That was a much simpler reader. Um, the feature reader itself will probably be changed to something like the feature joiner. Or querier, or maybe. Or querier, yep. yeah, yeah. So um, th that for sure won't happen in FME 2018. We need yeah. to ease you into that one. But uh, the, the rest of that experience, we're going to try to push pretty far, as, yeah, as yeah. far as we can. Yeah. OK, okay let's get the cloud guys up here. OK. So these are the guys that, next slide. Yep. So these are the guys who work hard to um, bring FME cloud. So they're working on a number of things. And I'm going to ask them questions. They've had lots of time to prepare, you can tell. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so, Stuart, what are, what's one thing you guys are working on? Yeah, so this is probably the, uh, the main thing we're, we're working on. Uh, so, at the moment, when you launch an instance on FME Cloud, you can only launch into AWS. So, after the, you know, I've had some fantastic discussions this week with people, and I've heard the word Azure, Azure, Azure come up over and over again. So, I know we're working on the right thing here. You know, by only restricting people to launch into AWS, we're really really restricting you because FME needs to go where the data goes. That's always been the case. In the past, it was Linux, Windows, you know, Mac. Yep. Now looking forward, we, these data volumes are exploding. We have to put the FME engine next to where the data goes. Yep. Yep. So, you know, this is what we're working on here. We're going to let you deploy into any uh, cloud system from FME Cloud. So you'll be able to choose AWS, Azure, IBM, or whatever comes next. Yep. Uh, and yeah, the next thing is within those cloud systems, we have public, private, uh, hybrid clouds. I've been talking to people about this as well. They want to deploy the FME technology into, into these different cloud types. We're not quite sure how we'll do it nope, fully nope, yet, but nope. um, Absolutely. You know, this is the focus probably yep, yep. short to long term for the yep, team. Yep. Yeah, and you guys use a lot of Docker. Like That's really the future making yep. all this happen, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so it's super exciting, yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, thanks, guys. Love okay, thank, thank you. you. Yep. <clears throat> okay, now we have, uh, we have a co-op student coming up here with Hugh. Um, Ryan, how long have you been working with us for, Ryan? Four months now? Or, oh, sorry, sorry, four weeks. Four, four weeks, yeah. Weeks. So, it just feels like four months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so you can imagine how excited he was when I say, guess what? You're gonna be up on the big stage. So 
So, so what are you working on, Ryan? So I'm currently working on this uh, encryption management system, and yeah. that has allows the user to have two options to use either a secure mode or a restricted mode. And basically, the secure mode uses a system-wide default encryption key to encrypt all of their sensitive data. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, the restricted mode allows uh, users to rotate their keys by either generating or uploading new key files. Yeah. And to keep track of these uh, key files, they can download and archive them. Yeah. So what happens if I specify a private key, I go into restricted mode, and I lose it? Can I call safe and get my date, my everything back, or am I kind of cooked? I think you're kind of cooked. If you're cooked, cooked, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like those PEM files, right? If you get a PEM file for a secure environment and you lose it, um, but this is a really big deal for some of our larger clients who they have very sophisticated key rotation processes where they lock those keys up and uh, to keep their system secure they have to keep rotating them. And this is the first step, building the REST APIs, building the GUIs, and then on top of that we can, uh, we, we can really take it to the next level. Security is a, is a massive deal. Many of these things we're doing on server is for sure driven by the things our cloud team's working. So that's yet another benefit um, to SAFE in moving to the cloud. So thanks, guys. OK. So oh, we're down to the closers. Yeah, we're down to the closers. OK. So let's hope my internet connection's good. Do you need VPN? Well, no, I don't need VPN. Now, is this my, that's my movie. Yeah, so we'll get rid of him. So just because we want to get rid of him. OK, so now I'll go over here. And I'm just going to hit Escape. Yeah. And then we're going to go. I have a special machine for you guys. So, and we're in. Perfect. Okay, okay. so this is, this is Amun and Iris. Okay, and they've been working on something very, some, something very exciting which they're going to uh, show us. Yeah, so we, some of you who've used server know that, that we have a really powerful uh, notification system in server. Yeah. Uh, but for new users and even for large workflows and notifications, it can be quite cumbersome to use. Yeah, like we've all, like when I use it, I draw a picture on a piece of paper and I make sure I, sp all my, I know all my topic names to build the flows and then it doesn't work and then I pour through everything and I realize I missed an uppercase character or something like that. So, so let's, so take it away. So, so and I, I have a scenario for you so when you start going sure, here. Perfect. Okay. So. Yeah. So imagine you had a boss who changed his mind a lot. <laughs> That's hard to imagine. Can you come up with something more realistic? Yeah, Bob? and always had really great ideas. So, <laughs> so uh, and he just and, and this boss just wants to drop a file someplace. And that's, I want to drop a file someplace and then run a workspace. So what can you do for me? And I might drop it on FTP, because I don't know if, I'm an old guy, so maybe, oh, it wasn't supposed to reveal who that boss was. So <laughs> I might use FTP or, uh, yeah, so okay. So let's say I use FTP. Sure, so what we can do is we can throw down a trigger. Okay. And in that trigger, we can choose the trigger type. And let's go down to, well, how about Dropbox? Well, we got FTP FTP's there. FTP is there, yeah. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Okay. And then you can fill out the FTP connection okay. setting. Okay. I changed my mind. Let's do, okay. I want to yep. just drop it in a, a directory. There we go. <laughs> so just in a directory. Yeah. Oh, you gave me both. Yeah, why not? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what can go wrong? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay, so now just try, sure. I want to run a workspace. So you want to run a workspace. So yeah, yeah, and I don't even know what workspace I want to run, but I want okay. to run I'll one. I'll just pick one. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I, wanna, I, want some, I want you to email me uh, when it fails. Sure. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, call one. Mouse problems. Yeah, there's a mouse there too. If you want. Yeah. There we okay. Go. So do you, do you connect those together or anything, or what do you do there? Yeah. So now you can just you know do as we do, like yep. the workbench. Yeah. Similar. Is just hook them up. You can use the mouse right. if you want. Mouse. Yeah, the mouse. Will work. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that mouse Jeez. is. Got the jitters. Is it no. not working? <laughs> okay. No, there we go. So yeah. So now I. Well, I want to scare a developer? Ask them to come on. <laughs> So, okay, awesome. so wow, I didn't Look know you that. could do that. And now I could create, I could take the success. Well, I want to be, yeah. Yeah, right. and then you just hook up the success. Yeah, my workspaces never fail, so I really don't need to do that. Uh, so so, you, don't, so you don't need yep. failure then. Yep. So, okay. yep, so look at that. Then you'll be able to save that. You no longer have to worry about, you know, the topics and all that stuff goes underneath. You'll be able to chain workspaces together. Yep. You'll be able to do all sorts of great stuff. Yeah, so, you can have multiple, yeah. in, uh, multiple um, uh, triggers. Yep. To 
modular workspaces. So yeah. to, be, to be very clear, if it failed, you could have another workspace run? Um, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good. So, awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so that's great. Thank yeah, you, guys. Thank you. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Wait a oh, minute. yeah. Oh, do we have time for? Yeah, mm -hmm. there's, do, well, it's not that big of a deal. Do we have time? Let's do, I think so. We have time okay. for one, one more, more thing. thing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a little bit of time. So here, I'm going to set up this workspace for me. But uh, maybe I'm not sure demographics. Mm, is this really, you know, I'm kind of mixed up. Maybe you have a few of these. I want to know which one this one is. So I'm just going to double click on it. Oh, there we go. And you see I've got this other tab popping up. Whoa. And here we go. We've got a, a little kind of sneak peek of this workspace. All right. So I can click in and I can look at, um, at my different parameters here. Yep. And you'll see we're using the FME server parameters here. And we've kind of recreated a workbench uh, workspace viewer in our uh, server interface. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So that's, so that's kind of where we're going. So ultimately, I guess I'd be able to edit workspaces, create them and everything right within a browser. That's the ultimate goal. We're not quite there yet. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, actually, our interface is a lot further along, a lot more to do in the back end. But uh, yep, that's the ultimate goal. That's where we're going. Awesome. Thanks so much. Awesome. So you guys are, there's a, a table out there for people can talk to you about this? Yep, we'll be in the doctor's office. We've got a table. Um, and we'll both have our laptops. And you can check out previews of both the automations and this feature. Um, as well as I'm going to be giving another more detailed talk at 1.30 today. Uh, 1.30. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Well, I think that that just about, I don't think we've got too much left in inventory to show here. No, Don. I think we're good, aren't we? We just got to load up. We got to load up the rest of this presentation. I think that uh, yeah. we're down Scroll to, the bottom. yeah, load her all back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been a fun morning. Yeah. And there's a lot yeah. of moving parts and it basically held together. Okay. Yeah, and I got to show my audio visual skills. That's always a high point for you, yeah. I know. So we're right here. <laughs> are we? I think we are. Please remember. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. Wow, well, we really are at the end. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's go for the presentation mode so you get to see this in its full glory. So, uh, I guess we're, we're, it's kind of sad, but uh, it all ends today. Yeah. So I you know, certainly hope you've had fun. Um, I, I had fun, and I know the safe, the safe team had, had a lot of fun for sure. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, oh, yeah, we're going to have a sock photo, apparently. <laughs> at, so who knows where the sock photo is over there? Is that right? Who's the sock? Yeah, that's right. So when's that? Is it 1235 or something? Yep. So if you're wearing your FME socks, you can go over there, and I'm sure we'll show that three years from now. Absolutely. Um, and be horrified. But yep. anyway. Yep, no, so that's, that's that. That's that. I'm actually wearing mine right now. Oh, I don't even have any. Yeah. So that brings us to the thank yous. Yeah. Um, there's, a, of course, thank all of you for supporting us all these years, for coming here and joining us this week. Yep. Um, it's, been, it's been fun. Um, and thanks for all the feedback. Um, and, and, as you, as, and as you leave, please remember this is only the beginning. We just thrive on feedback. We know Vancouver's far, and we really, really appreciate all of you for, for coming this way. It was really amazing when uh, Jan asked how many people were here from Europe. I knew I, I'd talk, spoken to a lot of people from Europe as I walk around, but clearly it, it felt like about, about half. Yeah. And, so, and so thank you so much for that. And uh, I yeah. think as well, um, there's an amazing team that, uh, there's a, a huge team at SAFE, we'll get to them in a second, but specifically, there's a the so-called A team, and to be on this team, your first name has to start with an A, and so can I invite the A team yeah, up come here? On up. Ashley, Ada, and Amanda, Sonia, we're Sonia. A, Abby. We're the Sonia, Sonia. And Sonia. their fearless leader, Sonia. Sonia's come name on up. ends in A, so she's, she's valid, yeah. And so, yeah. Ashley, is this just like kind of giving birth? Yes. Yeah, Ashley, in case you didn't know, gave birth how many days ago? Uh, about 12 days ago. 12, 12 days. days ago. So, <laughs> yeah. That's oh, yeah. almost come on, uh, up. come on up. Yeah, yeah. that's almost American style yeah. maternity leave we've got going here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and of course, there's others we need to, to thank. Um, yeah. You've probably all heard about, yeah. War you've probably all heard about Warner Brothers, you know, great. Well, it's safe we don't have the Warner Brothers. We have the Warner Sisters. So come on up, Warner Sisters. Come on up, Warner Sisters. Yeah, let's get the A team. And you can see how, Tiana, how great Tiana looks 
in wearing. She's broken many, many um, dressing <laughs> rules today. And, and I even noticed. That's how you know she really broke. Yeah. Go over there, and yeah, you can oh, take, oh, get, right get a picture yeah. taken. So thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. And All I'll right. get on this end. And stand by Ashley. All right. So thank you. Yep. Yep. I'll just show a little leg, too. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Great. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. Thank you so much. Everybody, the producers of this show. Thank you. And I think lastly, um, we'll just ask the entire SAFE team. There's a, a fair number of you here today. Basically, the whole team is here. Can you all just stand? Uh, Don and I, I'm going to try not to get emotional here. Ooh. I'm going to yeah. hand it over to you, Don. It's a great, it's, I mean, it's just a pleasure every day to come and work with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the team at SAFE. Um, I often, people ask me when they meet the team, wow, you're so lucky. And, um, and I am lucky. And it, and I don't deserve it. I mean, and I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a, in a, a you know a way. But you, you know, you just get get surrounded by by things after things. And sometimes in life, you really get lucky. And uh, getting a chance to work with every one of you, man, am I lucky. I must have been so good in a previous life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank each and every one of you for making our company the great thing that it is, and our products the great products that they are, and for fueling the success of all these great customers. Yeah, so thank so, you, Safers. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I guess. And yes, and thank all of you. Um, we'll see you next year on World Tours. Please come out. Um, I was talking with a fellow from Victoria, Tim, I can't remember his last name, but he said to me, he said, like, the thing with world, to world tours are great, we love world tours, but he pointed out to me, he said, the great thing, when you go to a world tour, he says, you see the same people all the time. And he says, so it's nice to have one of these every once in a while, because you get all these great ideas from all over the world, they come together, and they sort of cross you know, you cross pollinate. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> cross pollinate, and then when and then when we all go back, we all have new ideas that we can share. Hey, this is what they're doing in Germany, or this is what they're doing in the Netherlands, or this is what they're doing in Vancouver, and um, it's just fantastic. So while we won't do this every year, um, I think if we did it every year, we just appreciate so much that you're willing to spend the money to come to Vancouver. Yeah. Never mind the cost of the conference. We know that this is like a hugely expensive city, far from everywhere, yeah. and. Um, but we will be doing the world tour. We will have another user conference. Um, and we just, again, want to thank you so much for you know, all you do for SAFE, all you do for FME, all you do for the community. I really mm -hmm. believe that we are making a difference. Mm -hmm. We have this, it, you know, we can't leave this planet in the, in the state it is for the next generation. We have to fix this mess. And I, I believe that this group here is going to help us do that. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, whoa. Um, I think it must be time for coffee, <laughs> please. Um, so it must be coffee out there. Enjoy the sessions. Enjoy lunch. Don't forget the sock photo. And then there'll be ice cream at 3. And then we all turn into pumpkins and uh, get to go outside and enjoy the sun. So Great. enjoy the afternoon. Yeah, thank you.